You're about to listen to a podcast from the Firearms Radio Network. For more, visit firearmsradio.net. Welcome to the Firearms Insider Gun and Gear Review Podcast, episode 528. This show is brought to you by XS Sights, Primary Arms, Walker Defense, and VZ Grips. In this show, we have a Tactics LPVO review. We discuss a Frontline Plus, a 2-inch Roscoe, and a Regen. As you may know, we try to showcase guns, gear, and anything else you might be interested in. We strive to do our best to evaluate products from an unbiased and honest perspective. And I'm Chad Wallace, and with me tonight, we have everybody, Tony, Rob, and Rusty. First up, Walker Defense helps pay the bills with and provide shooters with the finest, most innovative quality tactical accessories and firearm components around. From their Nile grip panels to their Nero muzzle brakes, no details are ever left behind. Only top quality materials are used in the manufacturing process. Together, all of this gives you some of the best firearm performance around. Everything they have to offer is proudly made in the USA. Walker Defense, where American Inch Duty meets bleeding edge technology. Now, our Walker Defense product of the week this week is their one slot Nile grip panels. So these are just their M lock grip panels, but they're one slot. So they're probably about an inch long. They work great if you need like an index to put your thumb or something like that. You can use code INSIDER15 for 15% off everything you can find over at walkerdr.com. So now let's get into what we did in firearms. I'm going to start with Rob. Uh, yeah, I was laid up all weekend. I was sicker than a dog. Oh, well, at least so you're... three-day weekend, and I didn't do jack. Yeah, that sucks, but That's at least you're important. feeling better. So, yeah, so we'll go up to the ne- next laid up person, and that's Rusty. Well, I, I, I spent, uh, uh, I had a child graduate high school and uh, through the week, and I spent like half an hour trying to figure out how to carry my handgun since I just had surgery. And uh, I got hose poked in my belly, and, my, and I couldn't carry appendix. And then I got hose poked in my right side, so I couldn't carry, you know, there so i was trying to figure out how i was going to carry a gun so i finally figured it out uh because uh, the jeans i had on i didn't want to pocket carry because i didn't think i could get it out fast enough but i, I wound up carrying a little bit around about five o'clock my sig 365 but i did carry i, I carried then over the weekend i, I threw through one in the pocket in my shorts my cargo shorts and, you know that's didn't shoot anything but i wanted to but that's just that's about it I know Tony did something good. Yeah, I, I, I figure we'll go to Tony f- next since, you know, he's going to steal the show, but I did something too. But we'll let Tony steal the show today. You're muted, Tony. <laughs> yeah, I forgot I muted myself. Um, so I went to Kevin Dixie's train and learn and outside of Atlanta. That was great. Uh, we, I, I, took, I took my high point. Nine, uh, 20. I took the high point nine millimeter carbine in the high tower on the chassis to run in uh, my rifle or carbine class, whichever we were taking. Now, understand, I never read this, the notes they gave us for the event, but I decided I was going to take my uh, dissipator, my PSA dissipator that I built as a backup gun in case, you know, I had to shoot rifles or something, but it had iron sights. It's the same one I won a competition with in November. But I only had it set up to shoot off bags. I didn't have it set up to run a carbine class. So there was no sling on it. There was no light on it. It was just ready to shoot. I go to the event. Oh, and I bring my high point uh, JCP 40 cal pistol because we're going to shoot content with that, which we ended up doing, which is great. Uh, Talking about ending of the arrow. If you know how to shoot, if you know the fundamentals, you can still, you know, run a gun. We came out here and we go to take a class, USCCA's AR-15 class, taught by uh, Sean and Beth Alcazar, or as like Sean likes to say, he's Mr. Beth Alcazar, uh, from USCCA. And we get out there and I'm trying to run this freaking rifle with no sling in a class. Impossible. So uh, (laughs) Lance from Tactical Life, who's their guy uh, who builds their rifles and is their 
pretty much director of coming up with new guns. Uh, he breaks out. He gives me his AR, 16 inch or I think 13 nine with a suppressor, uh, with a primary arms 5x prism and an offset for primary arms red dot. So he gives it to me, and Lance is a normal sized person. Maybe he weighs 175 pounds. He's got a sling on it. Of course, he's so skinny, I can't get my second arm through the sling, so I have the whole rifle hanging around my neck. And we're start off shooting at like five yards, so I can't use a 5X prism. So I'm learning to use an offset, 45 degree offset, on a suppressed rifle for the first time in a class. You know, my usual. <laughs> So I, I got to I got to run their new suppressor on an AR during the class, and it was interesting. Uh, it was fun. Man, does AR spit a lot of freaking stuff back in your face, man? Uh, it's for like you open the freaking grill and the smoke just rolls in your face. That's what it's like shooting a suppressed AR. That's, um, why, that's why you go to a piston gun. And they told me, oh, that's the really good suppressor he's like it really gets smoky when you use other people i'm like oh okay so um i got to shoot that and of course i want to run the gun but we're in class you know what i mean so you do the drills you're told to do and again i'm learning to shoot at a 45 degree offset um i and truthfully not using my rifle allowed me to experience something totally different and I kind of appreciate it more that I didn't use either one of my rifles, either the bullpup or the regular rifle, because I got to try something totally new for an hour and a half. And uh, I'm kind of impressed by it. But, man, adding all that stuff to your rifle adds a lot of weight. I mean, we, we got a pre- suppressor that's like six or eight inches. We have uh, both a 5X prism and a red dot offset. That's that's some weight. Plus, you have the you know the um, um, hand guard and everything else. But all I was running before was just a dissipator, and it wasn't hanging around my neck. Pretty much single point sling like because I was too big. Even though his was set up as a two point, I'm too big for his two point sling. So it was hanging around my neck like Flavor Flay's clock. <laughs> so, so I ran that, and then I got to check out some other stuff. Uh, I got video up on some of it. If you guys follow me on social media, you follow my YouTube. You see, I got to shoot the Beretta 92X with what, what, what is that called? The that, something 15. Was it the RS 15 from Primary Arms? No, the one I the just RS-15. just reviewed like a couple weeks ago. Dude, you reviewed that thing. And you were talking about it's really clear, and for bro, the entire time I used that gun, zero stigmatism. I mean, it really. It was almost like I didn't have stigmatism. That's yeah, yeah, no, no. When I when I reviewed it and I said this thing is clear, because most of them do. Like a lot of people, we have astigmatisms, and mine like spray out to the bottom and bottom right hand, and you know it just depends on the person. But I shot this thing, and I was like, this thing is super clear. I I, I mean. It's hard for me to find one that works that well for my astigmatism. Granted, I'm not keen on the footprint it uses, but what footprint does it use? It uses the um. It uses the C old school Seymour Seymour micro footprint, which yeah. is the same hole spacing as the Delta Point Pro. Yeah, but it doesn't have the pins in the same spot. So if your slide has like index pins to help hold it then it won't work on a Delta Point Pro footprint. Now, of course, mine doesn't, so I mounted it on the Delta Point Pro footprint. This thing, it was funny because I didn't realize how clear until you asked me how did it look. And I'm like, holy crap, dude. Like, I had, it was just like, bing, bing, bing. So I actually, this is how confident I was. If you see my video, I'm shooting in one hand while filming with my phone on my chest. That was after looking through it one time and running like five rounds through it. I was like, this is kind of easy. And I'm holding my phone here. So both both hands were free. And I was still able to do it. 
because it was that clear and I hit it in the bullseye. Even so, better. Even better. And even better. So and, that's what I did. What's up, Mike? Pr- primary Arms was there too, right? Ken Ross yeah. was there. Yes, yeah. I, hung, yeah. I hung out with Ken. We smoked cigars. We uh, <laughs> hung out by the fire over there. They have a bonfire every year, which is awesome. If you are a creator, this is one of the events you should go to because they keep it small. There were only 75 people total. Um, they were able to break down into four different classes. They broke us up and we went out. And I'm talking about total of volunteers and instructors and everything. So it keeps it small and it gives you a lot of information. I think we had 11 segments of instruction over a two day period. So you got a lot of information on everything from running social media to improving your everything. Definitely worth going to, especially because it's like 400 bucks for a three day weekend of professional level instruction. And also the networking, uh, you get to meet, uh, Bursa was there. So I got to check out and fondle not only Bursa's new BAR 15, uh, their AR, but also their 1911 plus the, what is it called? The TS, uh, their line of pistols, the one that they have issued to the Argentinian police. I got to check all that out. And the ammo was provided by Phoenix ammunition. So. I didn't have to bring anything. If you wanted to do the night shoot, you'd have to buy your own ammo, which is 300 blackout, 45 ACP, and, uh, you know, 148, yeah, 148 grain or 147 grain 9 mil. But we have a severe thunderstorm, thunderstorm, and, uh, it cut out the night shoot. So that, that part sucked, but we were able to do the bourbon and the cigars by the bonfire instead. And, and you got to hang out with some cool people. And again, Three-day opportunity to network with companies that you can deal with. Plus, Jared from Guns and Gadgets was there to give you all kinds of information about how to run a YouTube channel. Sweet. Sweet. All right. So that was it. Uh, any more stuff, you can just follow my social media. I'll be talking about it off and on. And I met a whole bunch of new people, including a dude who was a felon, got out, got his rights back. And now he's working to help educate other people who got out, straighten up their lives, and they're trying to get their firearms rights back, too. Nice. And I think that's really worthwhile. <clears throat> yeah, sweet, sweet. Well, I guess I did something too. Like it's not near as cool as what Tony did, but you know, I I took the CP firearms kit out and shot another steel match, local steel match. I can of course, I don't know how this works. I just can't. I just can't win a match. I came in second overall in the match only had one stage win but you know hey it's you know i can't say i did bad but i will say that the other guy that beat me was pretty much running the same cp firearm stuff and his name's chad so yeah i can't you know i can't complain as long as i cover up the uh, cover up the last name on the practice score thing people don't know any different (laughs) Uh, but then I, I was running some, I also ran some rounds through the PR trigger from our friends at JSD supply, getting optics, the pull release for the clock, uh, things running good now, uh, let some other people shoot it. They thought it was kind of fun. <laughs> I mean, what do you say? I still need to like, I don't know, print a chassis or something to run it in just because I think it would better than running a pistol version, but it is what it is. It, it is fun. Uh, I think they're around 250 bucks or something. Uh, if you go to PR triggers or JSD supply has them too, of course. So you can head over there. <laughs> <laughs> you can head over there. We all know it. Then I, we, I can't say I, because I just basically helped her and hold, held a few roll pins or something. Uh, the AR that we were putting together for Zoe, she's putting it together. It is now finished. Uh, it's not sighted in or anything, but all the parts are together. Safety checked. Uh, it's all together. I can't show it because it's stupid YouTube. <laughs> uh, but, you know, and I'll, we'll be writing up an article on it for, you know, all the parts that got donated for it, which were most of them. <laughs> uh, and then, you know what it's like from her perspective, but you know, it'll be there sometime here in the future on the website, getting her to help with anything is sometimes kind of a, a trick, but 
What do you expect? She's Tony's daughter. <laughs> she's my kid. She doesn't listen. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm I'm impressed about the whole thing about her doing that. And, you know, I, I mean, she did ninety percent of it. I mean, yeah, like I'd be like, hey, this is what you got to do. You know, and I have all the tools, so that helps too. You know, the roll pins are work better with two people anyway, because one person can hold the roll pin while the other person starts to tap it in with, you know, stuff like that. But, you know, I have all the barrel torque wrench, stuff like that. The lower parts, putting the lower together. She did launch a pin, you know, even with a tool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, everybody that. Uh, so, you know, uh, but yeah, so I was... You know, pretty impressed, and you know, unfortunately, I, found, I probably only get to put a few shots through it. But <laughs> hey, Chad, know. when I'm assembling my uh, lower on AR-15, what I do is I find an old box and I assemble it inside the box. That way, when the pin launches, it just it just bangs around inside a box. Well, when she was doing it, I was holding my hands over over the end so mm -hmm. that if it sprang out, because you know, I have a clevis pin, which also you know you can you use as a yeah. a tool. Yep. So that I got helps. The little wing one. Yeah. yeah, you can buy the real one, but I had these laying around years ago. Peter. So, you know, hey, it's a tool. So that's done. Now, announcements. Bandwidth sponsor, our friends over at Patriot Patch Co. And for July, they show a picture of the patch. It's a bald eagle with flag painted wings. He's got a couple like bottle rockets in his claws, talons. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> Go check them out. They make cool stuff. They got all kinds of patches and other stuff you might need. And they help us out. You know, we don't we don't hate Ryan. He, we like him. You know, he did start this thing and then turn it over to me. So I can't, compl can't, can't complain. You can go help him out. Don't forget all our affiliates discounts. They're in the show notes. They're also on the YouTube video. So you can find them. You can save some money. I think there's been a bunch of people buying buying those edible STD competition sites <laughs> by the looks of it. So yeah, there is that. And Rob, do you want to take it away? Maybe okay. Not. It maybe I, I wonder if he went to get something. Should, should, should so. you want to hit it? I, I'll hit it. Okay. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are those of the individual co-hosts and do not reflect the official policy or position of the Firearms Radio Network or their employers. This is not legal advice, nor should it be considered as such. Viewers' discretion is advised. This is especially true on live shows. The main topic is sponsored by Primary Arms. Primary Arms seeks to provide the best shopping experience for everything in firearms. They have over 13,000 products from your favorite brands, including a complete selection of rifles, handguns, firearm parts, and shooting gears. Every order comes with a commitment to superior service, fast shipping, and an expert support team. Don't forget to check out Primary Arms lines of optics, too. Our primary, primary arms product of the week is the Expo Arms Chrome Line Barrel. Find everything you need by handing it. Heading over to primaryarms.com, sign up to win the GLX4 SLX 1 to 6 by 24 Aurora 300 blackout slash 7.62 by 39 reticle at firearms TV slash giveaway. <laughs> Ooh, that's a lot. It's a, it, it, he doesn't even get the website right. It's firearmsinsider.tv slash giveaway. And yeah, and yeah. Rusty even has one of these, and we're probably one of these. we're prob we're probably going to give this one away when he does the review of it. So you know, I don't know. You give probably a couple um, weeks, yeah, a month maybe by the time we get it on yeah. here. You know, so you got time to sign up, but head on over and sign up because who doesn't like free stuff? I, I got to tell you, now that optic is awesome. Uh, I sent Chad some uh, pictures here the other week of me shooting my 300 blackout. I think I actually put some on social media on Instagram. I sighted it in on my uh, Mossberg MVP patrol rifle. That's and right, the shooting, bolt gun. Yeah, the bolt gun has 164 grain, 160 something grain, um, uh, 300 blackout ammo through this rifle. And once I figured out where it was shooting at, I sighted it at 50 yards. I was stacking 10 round groups in like an inch pattern 
Then I stepped out to a hundred yards. That was 50 yards. I stepped out to a hundred yards and I was shooting about an inch and a half group. Once I figured out on the Chevron where it was shooting at. Nice. And I told Chad, I said, I did not think how accurate a 300 blackout was because I had never shot a 300 blackout for accuracy. Yeah. I'd always shot it just to shoot to hit the target at 25 yards. And then like, well, it's done because I never thought it to be an accurate rifle. Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> there you go. But guess what? Rusty does have a review this week for us. I, I do. And it is on the right on three tactics, one to eight by 24. So take it away, Rusty. All right. The name of this review is right on, man. So the right on three Right on three tactics, one to eight by 24 LV, LPVO. Uh, up for review today is the right on 3X tactic LPVO, one to eight by 24 rifle scope. In the world we're in now, it's either red dots or LPVOs on your rifle. Well, I can't tell you which way to go because I run both. What I can tell you is LPVO that right on makes is a good choice if you're looking for a mid tier rifle scope. Is it the best? No. Is it the worst? Not by a long shot. It has a, it has good and bad features that you have to choose what you like for yourself. To start off with, the three the three tactics is solid. I would also say that it is duty grade for sure. I dropped it on the ground and beat it back and forth uh, around the back of my truck on my body while uh, on a sling and so on. It never lost zero. The mount they sent me was one of their own, and it was a rock-solid mount with a level built in on the bottom, uh, the back of the bottom. I would assume that it was, uh, I would assume that this is for when you're taking longer shots and you have to keep the reticle level uh, or to play the wind, or it could be just an aid when mounting a scope. I'm not sure. This is a tactical scope that has all the features you would expect in a high-dollar optic for twice the money. It has a patent pending dual throw lever for adjustment, cap turrets, six different bright, brightness settings, and is available in black or FDE. For some reason, they sent me a black optic with an FDE mount, but that doesn't matter to me. Under the windage and elevation, uh, uh, under the windage and elevation caps are zero resettable turrets. There are three different height throw levers and a flush mount one. Windage to elevation adjustments are half MOA. There are six levels of red illumination with an off position between each level. It's a feature it's a feature a fat it features a fast uh, eye, uh, focus eyepiece. They say it's 100% waterproof, fog proof, and rugged design ready for the toughest environments. I could not find a waterproof rating on the website or in the documentation, so I'm just going to take a, their word for it. Man, the optic was easy just like any other. Just follow the directions and torque specs and you'll be fine. The clicks on the dials were fantastic and probably some of the best I've, I've turned. Uh, once you have the scope zeroed at your preferred distance, you can loosen the screw and the dial and just turn it back to zero and tighten it back down. Right on optic is a second focal plane, which means the reticle stays the same at all levels of magnification. Second focal plane or SFP optics have the reticle behind the magnifying lens. The advantage of that is it always stays the same size. The disadvantage is that you're going to use the holdovers that are listed in the manual that you have to have the optic at max power. I use different power levels and I keep a dope card taped to the stock of my rifle so I know where I am with the magnification. Just be mindful that this is a capture optic, so if you want to dial for wind, you got to take the caps off. The reticle is, is a unique design to me. I have not used one like this before, and it is easy to use. It can be a little busy at first. Once you learn what everything means, you're good for elevation and windage, and it has a dot in the center that works well for close-up. The reticle is called the an OT reticle. Once you look at it, you will understand it's it's a broken circle that is a 20 MOA in diameter with a 1 MOA dot in the center. 
After that, you have a T with the bottom of the T hanging out of the bottom of the circle. It has four vertical lines that run out from each side of the bottom from the 10 MOA center out. Each line is a half MOA wide. The distance between each line is five MOA, and the lines are five MOA tall. Then there are horizontal lines in between each vertical line. There are there are three of these, and they are three MOA long and a half MOA thick. So you have all these lines, and the math figured out, so you're you're golden. I see that this is no different than people that use tree reticles and call wind and elevation on the fly with them. This is just something different that works. I mailed the 3X tactics 1 to 8 on two different rifles and went to the range numerous times with both of them. I even used uh, this optic in the Kevin Dixie rifle class. It definitely took some abuse that day. So far, I've run about 1,500 rounds with this optic out to distance of 200 yards. I mainly ran it around 50 and in. I ran it like a red dot in various light situations. The good thing about the illumination setting is, is that there is an offsetting between each brightness setting. The optic never lost zero at all. I did my own little repeatable test with with it at 100 yards. I took one shot that landed close to the center of the bullseye. Then I cranked over 10 clicks to the right, and then I took a shot. Then I went 20 clicks to the left, and I took a shot. These outline shots were almost identical in places. I then cranked it back to my original settings, and it was within a half inch of my first shot. I'm not going to bore you with all the details of the Rod On 3 Tactics 1-8 to LPVO. I will list them down below so you can read them on the website. I can tell you that this optic impressed me more during a training class and competition than it did on the range. It is a little cluttered to me, but I am more, but I am more used to simplified optics. So take that with a grain of salt. This optic might be right up your alley. I know in my, I know it is going on to my, to, to my battle rifle and it will stay there until I find something better. Have I figured it all out? No, but I am still working on it. The glass is clear. The turrets are tactile. The light, the lights are bright, and the scope mount is wonderful. I have used better optics, but not for the money that this one offers. I like, I like it. It works. Right on it is not known for making cheap optics, so you know you're getting good quality glass. I do not know anything about customer service, but the folks at Shot Show 2024 were amazing when they talked to me about the scope. So the firearms insider key uh, points claim to fame, quality glass, tactile turrets, good price point, great light transmission, easy click turrets, great finish, good quality for the price. Uh, the target market is the average consumer that needs the extra money for their, uh, the extra, the con average consumer that needs extra for their money. Sorry. Uh, will serve most people well without breaking the bank. The average working Joe. Features and benefits. Um, the one to eight magnification. You can dial in, you know, and see out there at distance if you need to see something. The parallax adjustment fixed at 100 yards. The tube diameter is 30 millimeter. The lens, uh, optics lens diameter is uh, 24. Uh, focal planes is the second focal plane. Uh, fully multi-coated lens, wide band, waterproof coated, low light enhancement. Uh, the OT illuminated. Uh, field of view is 105 feet uh, at 100 yards. At 60-61 T6, it's got three and a half inch eye relief. Um, the exit pupil, this is low 7.5 millimeter, high 3 millimeter. The click value 100 yards, which is uh, half MOA. Adjustment range has 182 MOA adjustment. Mounting length is 6.75 inches. The length of the scope is 10.87 uh, inches. Weight is 19.3 ounces. And it comes with the flip up lens, the cover, lens cloth, and the Allen wrench. Um, what other optics, uh, what other aesthetics options are available for it? It comes with FDE. There's uh, what others are saying. There's, uh, there's three out of five stars in Optics Planet. Not terrible for the price. People said they purchased this and decided to go in another direction with their setup. 
uh, pros clear glass, well built, vertical illumination or crisp and clear. Um, they said the throw lever could be stiff. I didn't notice that. I know it's 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 there. You know it when you hit it. It's there. And this is something that I noticed. The eye box. Uh, it can, it can be, you got, you got to set the eye box. You got really got to dial this eye box in for you. And they say the eye box sucks. Um, uh, I've read that several places. I'm not going to say it sucks, but it can be a little difficult. Links to other reviews, the truth about guns, the outdoor hub, the price point, four seventy nine ninety nine. 99 retails about the same. Uh, you can find it on right on or Amazon. Uh, pros, it's lightweight, clear glass for the price, large turrets, easy to mount, good price point, illumination price point. The cons, the reticles can be cluttered at first. It's not a lupo quality glass. You have to adjustment the diopter quite a bit. I did have to adjust that diopter like numerous times to find it, to finally get it dialed in for my eyes. I was, I was fighting that battle when I dialed it up to like six to eight. I don't know if it was the eye box in there or or what. Uh, I was getting kind of like a uh, a shaded tunnel. Yeah, the, the chromatic abrasion or whatever on the outside. Yeah, yeah, I was getting that, and that's why I was saying the 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 optic wasn't cluttered there. It was it was tight in the eye box. So I shot mainly at three and four power with it. When I did go up to 200 yards to shoot, I was shooting off a bench, and I was working the head trying to get in there. Now, a buddy of mine, when we put the review out, after we put the review out, a buddy of mine that I hunt with, he has the same optic. And he said, he told me, he he posted on social media, on our link on this. So if you want to go to uh, um, the post I made, he put in detail what he didn't like about it. He likes the optic but he didn't like the eye box himself. So that's several people there. I give it an eight. I'm keeping it on my rifle. I've got, I put it on two different rifles. I had a, I had it on a rifle and had a malfunction on my rifle that I, I just completely wiped the rifle out. I took it off, put it on a Fox Trot Mock upper. It's going to stay there. It's going to be my everywhere. go to gun. I like it at one and two power at one power. I can still run with the up with the light on and the red dot, or I can just run it off. And it runs fantastic. And uh, out to 50 yards or so, still on one power, it runs like a red dot. I can dial it up and look at distance. And But then I know I'm not running for speed out that far. You, uh, you I guess you understand what I'm saying. If I'm, if I'm, if I'm dialing up that fast, that, that magnification, I'm not. I'm not in a hurry. Right. You're not in a hurry to shoot a moving target or something to that. Yeah. Effect. Yeah. 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 I'm looking to see if it's got horns on it or yep. something to that effect. So, but I think it's a good optic for the price. Uh, are there better optics? Yeah. There are definitely better optics. I think it ranks right in there with a lot of people that are making optics the same price. And it's probably better than some of the ones I've run. I've got several other LPVOs and other optics. I think it's just as clear. My biggest thing is the diopter and the eye box. That's the only thing I had a problem with. And I give it an eight. Hey, eight sweet. out of ten. So I only have one question on it. How bright does the reticle get? Is it like it gets, daylight bright? Yeah. Oh, it gets it gets it gets brighter than daylight. When you when you light it up, when you get up to like six, it's it's really bright. I mean, I had to dial it back. I run it about three during the daytime. Okay. And I didn't even really, I didn't even really have to turn it on. And you can run it in the during the daytime without the illumination and still see it. Right. I mean, it's flat. Right. It's just like a, it's just like a regular scope, but it's nice to have that illumination on there. Yep. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Well, thanks for that review. It looks like Rob texted us said, you know, the Elon Musk internet is down, so <laughs> Starlink died for some somehow. So he's out. He's out. But yeah, thanks for that review, Rusty. Uh, I guess that was the right, right on three tactics, one to eight by 24. So check it out. And now we'll get into the product spotlight and discussion. First up, we have the Black Rain Ordnance Frontline Plus. They make a frontline version too, but we're, we're talking about the plus. 
MSRP is six ninety nine to seven fifty. And so, this is their new pistol. I mean, it's new to them, I guess. <laughs> this is a Glockish pistol. So, I'll go over the things that they show on there. It's got upgraded stippling. You know, it's got an undercut trigger guard. It's got some little slide cutouts for weight reduction. It's got Ameriglow sights. It is red dot ready with an RMR cut. You know, it's got beveled slide. They say for quicker target acquisition, this is beveled on like the rear. Larger beaver tail. You know, standard pick rail for your mounting lights. Stuff like that. The Plus also comes in various colors. They're like a little extra. 50 bucks extra if you want like battle worn green or battle worn gray or red or pink or blue or whatever colors you want. It is nine millimeter. It is a compact size. So it's G19 size overall length is seven inches. It's one, one and an eighth inches wide, five and an eighth inches tall. It weighs 21.8 ounces with the mag, uh, five plus or minus five and a half pound trigger pull. Three and three quarter inch barrel. Of course, it comes with a P mag 15 GL9. So Glock mags, 15 round capacity. You know, they don't really tell you a bunch about it. It's backed by their lifetime warranty. You get you get that. Uh, of course, American made says it's got a ported slide and barrel. So I talked about the slide, but the barrel's ported also. It is red dot ready. It's essentially their their compact handgun that is Glock compatible. Is that a bad thing? I don't think so. You know, it's just, I think the market's pretty saturated, but I guess if you don't have a pistol, you might as well make a Glock copy because there's a million parts out there for it. So if you want to upgrade it, you know, something like that. I personally think the price is a little high for what you get when you compare it to other style Glock copies on the market. What do you guys think about this thing? Um, for what they're charging for it? I mean, no. I mean, I'm, I mean... <laughs> I mean, there's there's nothing there more than what you get for a a, a Palmetto State dagger. I mean, well, what's a stock Glock 19 cost? I mean, yeah, I mean, you're you're charging a hundred dollars more than what a than what a stock Glock costs, and I mean, then you're just putting some filament in there for color. I mean, if you want to if you want to make a clone of something, looks like a clone of a Walther, you know. PDP or something like that and upgrade it. Or, I mean, I'm just saying, let, let's do a CZ clone or something and, and really do something. Mm. I mean, I, 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 I'm just, I'm just being, just being fair here because you, it is saturated and it's getting the point that the parts are so damn cheap and there's uh -huh. so many of them. Are they making their own parts or it doesn't and, and say, why do I want to pay that much money for a five and a half pound trigger and Ameriglo sites and a P mag that's that I'm sure they're getting at three dollars a piece that By hangs way, out the, you, you only get one. And yeah. it hangs out the bottom like that when a lot of the other ones are flush fit. You know, I mean it, I, I'm just saying, I mean, okay. it might be a fantastic pistol. But it's I mean, he'll make a sig make a sig clone. I mean, some, let's do something different. I mean, I like Glock. Well, I'm a Glock person, but damn, let's, I'm tired of it. I'm not. I'm not tired of it. I, I think it's great. Make a Glock clone. A um, couple of things though. Why would I buy your Glock clone and not a PSA dagger with ten magazines for four thirty nine? You know what I mean? With a gold barrel and its green and its optics cut and its suppressor cut. Like, what are you bringing to the table that somebody, because of course, you know me, I go through this thing every time we do this to see who else makes it. I can go to Anderson Manufacturer for a Kaga 9C Pro and get the exact same things, except 
I don't get the pretty Serico job, but it's 539 and I can get it right now. Not a minimum eight to 12 weeks of waiting. Again, what are you bringing to the table for what you're giving me? So yeah, a PSA Tiger, a Tiger, a Polymer 80, or even a Shadow Systems. The Shadow Systems MR920 is 699 Yeah, same price as this. And I got it. Yeah, and I got a trigger job. I got all kinds of other things. I'm like, what are you bringing to the table? Because you damn sure ain't bringing a track record of making these handguns. All the rest of these companies have, you know, reviews from people all over the place. on it. So now I'm just supposed to get, and what is it, the SCT? The lower. It's not even something they built. It's something they bought. I, I don't know whose it is. It's different. It looks, to me, their, their frame looks more like a dagger frame. That's what I thought. That's what it looks like to me. But I mean, the dagger frame's comfortable, so it might be, they might have been like, well, let's model ours after this. I mean, full follow function when it comes to a lot of things. And um, uh, in in my opinion, cool, you're coming up with it. But all you're giving me that I can't get from other companies is a Serico job. Yeah. Yeah. So, cool. But I mean, I mean, it, look, if that's what you want to do, great. I'm not going to poop on it, but I'm not overawed by it. I, I went and looked up, see who came and, and, you know, checked them out at NRA or checked them out at a uh, shot. And I only found one because you can, as much stuff as you have going on a shot and at NRA, uh, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to waste my time pretending to be awed by another Glock Gen 3 clone with a paint job. Right. I mean, I've I've got three different clones of Glocks, mm-hmm. and they all shoot the same. Uh-huh. Well, think about it, dude. These is right, they were right beside Mossberg. We had to have walked past them twenty times at shot. Yeah, I, I, mean, I remember I, walking past them at shot. They were right beside Mossberg was on the left, and they were right here. You walk right by the Mossberg booth. Other than the colors, bro, there was nothing there. You're not bringing anything to the table with another Glock clone. I carry a Glock almost every day. It's either Glock or, or Sig 365. Mm-hmm. I never stepped foot in Glock booth the last two years because they didn't offer. They don't offer nothing Mm-mm. that I need that that I need that I want until they offer something different, and and until these companies bring up something different than a Gen three clone that that you can. Bring something new to the table. I, you know, it, it doesn't interest me anymore. I mean, I mean fine. I mean, it, it's good. I mean, bring me out some internals that are different. Right, right. Like put put your own trigger in it, and mention that it's your own trigger, not just a Glockish trigger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Y- you know, and that's that's kind of one of the things is it's like I get it, but you can look at it, and it does. Yeah, it's not a Glock trigger. But it sure looks a lot. I mean, it might be. It's still got the same curve. It looks very similar. It's not like it's a flat trigger, you know, and it doesn't give you an option. Us, yeah. What they're giving us is what's already out there, dude. Yeah. You haven't given us anything new. You're an also ran that's pretty late in the game. And what's, yeah. Again, it's fine, but if it gave you that one more, if it gave you that trigger, yeah. That would be something different. You, and this is this is their plus. Yeah, I mean, get if it's the front line. Go ahead. Wait, wait every three months and get a get something from Palmetto State when they run a holiday special. Save your extra money up, and then buy the triggers and drop in the damn thing. Yeah, and and, and you got this and better. And, and that's just yeah. I'm not pooping on the gun. Well, see, and I understand the prices. Right. The process yeah. too much. And I understand from, you know, from Black Rain Ordinance's thing is they didn't have a handgun. So it's like, uh-huh. okay, bring out a Glock copy, kind of diversify uh-huh. your market some. But I would have, I, you know, I would have liked to seen it if MSR, now granted, if this is selling for 550 bucks retail, but I kind of doubt that with the, with their, their MSRPs. You uh-huh. know, some companies are like uh-huh. that. But you know, it's like, hey, price it for six hundred bucks and sell them for five fifty, and I think you'd you'd be better off. I think you're kind of pricing yourself out of the market for when there's so many other options out there. Now they're rivals. Again, 
I, I, I'm, I'm game. I'm good with them. You called it a plus, though. I know, I know. And it's like, yep. yeah, it basically. And, and, and I'm saying, besides calling it a plus, you have the frontier line, and then you have the plus line, but a dagger's like right here with your plus, if not better than your plus, because it gives you multiple cuts for the dagger. Yep. Like, like RMR cut, you got the, I can't even think of stupid the, things. The about. dagger has every, you could go through multiple pages of dagger. Dr. Optic. See more diopter, uh, you know, you, you got, you know, the RMR, RMFC. See, and like in their case, their frontline version, which isn't the, which is their base model, I guess, it's uh-huh. 599 bucks. But I'm looking at this and it's okay. You have a few, they're very similar. You know, you get, uh-huh. you get a ported barrel inside slide is what it looks like to me with the plus. So if you want a ported yeah. barrel slide, but if you don't, then just look at the normal front line. It's still cut for an RMR. You know, it's still got decent sides on it, beveled slide. It's still got those. So I think you're getting a better deal with their front line version because the plus version, I don't think it's a ported barrel and slide. That's what you're getting extra. Now, my opinion, a couple of things. If you wanted to have a pistol, I think, like you said, Chad, rolling with the front line would have been a great entry level run for him if that's what you wanted to do. Put it at $4.99 or less. Put it in the same price point as many of these others and just roll with it. If you wanted to upgrade, then really freaking upgrade, bro. You know what I mean? Like, pimp it to frig out. Well, why? Because you're going to go up against these other things that have already been established. I agree with Rusty. Hey, let's keep coming out with lines of pistols. You'll have this. Then you'll have your CZ, you know, clone of a PO7, a PO9, uh, one of the CZ striker fires. Uh, come up with the P365, the P320, something. Yeah, exactly. To, to, to me, like, like just keep banging them out and you can be known or even come up with a pistol division because I mean, let's be truthful when it comes to striker fires, they're almost all the same any damn way. Pretty you, close you know, to you it. know what? If somebody can come out with an HK clone <laughs> and really bring it to market because you know there's HK fanboys out there. That's true. We don't have HK money. Or HK <laughs> and also what you call it? HK support. Uh, understand. The reason they're doing Glock clones is because the Glock Gen three uh, patents up. Mm-hmm. Yep. So it's probably not up on these other guns. And and that's fine. Look, the only thing I feel is for the price for the plus line, you're not getting stuff you can't get right now from other companies except their Cerakote job. And again, on their website, they say an eight to 12 week wait. No. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I want it now. <laughs> so that is the Black Rain Ordinance Frontline Plus. Now, for over 25 years, Excess Sites has helped you get on target faster. I'm going to read this since Rob can't today and mess it up. (laughs) So I'll mess it up. Offering Trinium Sites in all different styles and types. Low light is no longer an obstacle. Most options come with a brightly colored photoluminescent ring. That colored ring makes them work great in daylight by drawing your eye right to that front sight. Excess Sights has sight styles for everyone. Big dots, ghost rings, standard notch and post, minimalist, suppressor height, all offering tritium options. Available for a plethora of firearm types, from shotguns to handguns, Excess Sights has you covered for all your low light sighting needs. Now, our Excess Sights product of the week this week is the AK-47 and AKM tritium rear and standard dot iron sights. So, you know, if you have an AK and want some sights, they do make them. They make standard versions and tritium versions for you. Now, you can use code GGR20 for 20% almost everything at excess sights, but until Friday, so if even Friday, if you're listening Friday, they have their 25% off Memorial Day sale. So you get a better deal than they give us. So, you know, just head over there, use it if you want some. They're great. Uh, we all love them. Just go check them out. Now, <laughs> something that I think 
we're all excited for <laughs> here. Yeah. You know, next up, uh, the Heritage, the Heritage Roscoe <laughs> two inch, MSRP on this is three hundred sixty three dollars and ninety nine cents. Now, before I get done, they make a three inch version too. So if you don't want a two inch version, this is Heritage, which if you don't know is owned by Taurus slash Rossi. So they're all kind of the same company. So this is an if you think old school police snubby revolver, detective style revolver, this is what you get. <laughs> it is rated. Yeah, Steve. Yeah. Uh, it's 30, yeah, 38, what you get, Steve. 38 special plus P. Uh, wood grabs five rounds, as you can get, guess. And they, they say it's their tribute to the legendary gunfighters of the 30s, 40s, and 50s. Uh, hard-boiled detectives battling mob crime, movie sleuths, even real-world cops. So they get it. Uh, you know, there's not much information on it. It's fixed serrated blade front sight, notch built in, double action, single action. You know, it's their small frame, so of course it is. Overall length is 6.5 inches. Height is 4.8 inches. It weighs 22 ounces unloaded. Width is 1.41 inches because, of course, it's a revolver. Uh, Carbon steel alloys steel for the cylinder material, barrel material, wood grips, polished black, everything. And it has a transfer bar safety. You know... I saw this and I was like, this thing's pretty cool. This is, I really like what they did with this thing. I don't know what the trigger pull is going to be. And I really don't care because you know, they're going to sell for 320 bucks or something, (laughs) you know, and it's just cool. And they get the name of Roscoe. I mean, they did it great doing naming it too. So what do you guys got on it? I, I I think this 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 kickback right here is probably one of the best things that have come out in a long time. They, uh, you know, I've been trying to get a uh, one from uh, Henry, and it the, the their revolver and it, it never panned out because uh, they had that old school kickback revolver for three times the price. Yeah, this right here this this is a this is a Smith and Wesson. J frame clone all the way, all steel revolver. It's a little heavy, but it's all steel. This is what they carried back in the twenties, thirties and forties. This, this right here, this gun will shoot plus P's. It's not made to, to, to look at this gun is made to run. And it is, it's, it, 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 it is a Brazilian made gun. It is made from Taurus Rossi with a heritage name on it out of Bainbridge, Georgia. And you know what? It's going to have a 12 pound, 10, 12 pound double action pull on it, which is normal for a trigger. And everything I read said there's no stacking on it. It's just a straight wall trigger. They said one review said that the single action was a little, little rough. But you know what? Most triggers, unless you get a Colt or a high end Smith that's been worked on, your single actions and double actions are going to be a little rough until you break them in. Yeah. On a revolver. That's just my experience with them because I shoot a lot of revolvers. This right here, this this three hundred fifty dollar gun has impressed me just by looking at it because I will literally probably buy two of them. They this, are. On so, I clicked their link. They're three hundred seventeen bucks at guns dot com. <laughs> so uh huh. <laughs> so I look at this thing and I laugh. I laugh and I laugh and I laugh because pretty much this is what Henry should have done. Um. Their call with their old school gun was really cool, but they didn't push it. They didn't push the nostalgia. They went, hey, this looks old. And then they kind of walked away. Um, I think this is awesome. I think having a, because this is a Smith clone, right? Yeah, obviously. Yes. It's not a Taurus. Yeah. Because Taurus and Smith and Wesson, most people don't know. Taurus and Smith and Wesson worked hand in hand decades ago. And then when Smith started going through their design problems and went through some issues themselves, they went to Taurus to get help and get back on the ball. So that's that's the whole Taurus Smith and Wesson freaking thing. 
uh, they, they were tight from way back. So I think it's awesome that they went old school with this. I think it's great. Um, I hope because I was looking for it and I couldn't find it. It has the old school grips on there. It's kind of uncomfortable, but I'm wondering will modern grips slip over this? It should. It says, if it's the clone that everybody said. And I think because it says it's small frame, so I'm assuming it's small frame Tar Taurus Rossi. Or, or at least Taurus. So I'm thinking that you can get larger grips. And where could you find those, Rusty? BZ grips. BZ grips. Because my whole thing is great if it's nostalgic and it gets you to buy it and you like cosplaying with it, if you like feeling what the old school guns were like, for a heck of a lot cheaper than you're going to get one uh, from the classic line from Smith. Right. Heck of a lot cheaper. So I say run it, have fun with it. And if you want to update it or carry it, uh, get some BZ grips and smack it on, and uh, why not? Uh, especially for the price they're going for. So, so, uh, so in Dukes of Hazard, did Roscoe carry one of these? Uh, Roscoe was the name. Of, like, <laughs> this this was called Roscoe well before Dukes of Hazard. I, d- I, I know, I know. The, the, Ros- um, Ros- the Roscoe was the name of. If those who don't know, was the name of what you said. You got a Roscoe. Yep, yep. And th- that was that was like telling people you had a gun. That's right. Saying I got a gun. Is that a Roscoe and in your pocket? <laughs> is that a Roscoe in your pocket? Well, yeah. hold on. We're we're saying that because that's what we heard from the movie. So who knows how long that was in existence before it ever got picked up by Hollywood? Yeah, yeah. We could be talking about. It could be the eighteen hundreds. Turn out yeah, exactly. It could be the eighteen yeah. hundreds because a lot of this stuff. Remember when Hollywood was doing their gangster thing or their cop thing that was in the 1940s 1930s uh when they were doing radio shows you know what i mean mostly people were hearing about radio shows so that crap could have been around that could have been a 30 year old slang term by the time hollywood got old of it so who knows i just think it's cool it's a throwback and it's a, if it's an effective and accurate and heck get them both get the snubby and the three inch yeah because, why not? Oh, yeah that's what the cows carry now the annoying part for me is that the military action thing that I shoot in the military uh, competitions, when they do their TV land shoots and they roll back to all the cop shows from seventies, eighties, and nineties, they specifically say you need to use Smiths or Colts or whatever. But truthfully, if you had one of these and just showed up, look, the whole thing's for fun anyway. It's not like you're going to win an Olympic medal out of it, and it's a five shot. I think it would be cool, but again. It's 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 Taurus, and they have the Smith clones. It would be cool if they. Oh, she's special. She's special is a six shot, isn't it? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, this is a five shot. Hey, make a six shot. She's clone. Put that out too. Yeah. What the heck? <laughs> Why not? What the heck? Why not? <laughs> Why not? Why not? Why not? So, that is the Heritage Roscoe two inch. Okay, they make a three inch too. So next up. Our friends over at Cobra Tech have a new, you know, knife out. It's called the Regent. MSRP on this is $189.99. Why is it so expensive? Well, part of it is because it runs S35VN black titanium coated blade. It is a T6 aluminum handle. It's a three and a quarter inch blade, four and a quarter inch handle. So, of course, seven and a half inches overall. It has a bar lock, so the little bar lock at the top. It weighs 3.4 ounces. It's got an ambi clip, so you can reverse it. It is tip-up carry. It's got a lanyard loop. Some people like lanyard loops. Some people don't. Uh, it's got a thumb stud to open it. I don't think it's. it is not a flipper. It's just a thumb stud opener. But... It's got a little bit of texture on the grip, being aluminum. That helps a lot. The, it's white, white silver-ish white handle. Uh, basically, it's a lightweight, really nice, you know, just standard old, you know, opening. Well, I say old, but just thumb stud opening knife with a decent blade steel. And Cobra Tech makes good stuff, so... I thought I'd throw it in here because, you know, a lot of times we're talking about the Cobra Techs that are 
50 to a hundred bucks, but I was like, Oh, they're making some with just some normal folders, not out the fronts with some good blade steel. And I was like, Oh, I'll throw it in here. What do you guys think? I like, I like the texture and how it has the, around the, the edges of it. It's got the texture. You, you're still going to get a grip, but yet you still got the slickness of it on the, the aluminum on the sides. And my favorite part, it's got the S35 VN titanium coated steel. That's fantastic steel. And then you've got that deep pocket carry. This thing, this thing is for a flipper. It's a good looking flipper right here. You know, you know, everybody knows I'm a Cobra Tech fan. I carry one every day, have been for a year or so now. And, um, and I beat the crap out of mine and they just keep going. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't see where you can go wrong with it. No, I, I, I don't either. I mean, the, the the few I have, they're kicking around. I have the, out the front and then a couple others. And, you know, they're fantastic knives for just simple, everyday use knives. Tony, were you trying to say something? Yeah. I'll have, did you hear that, Rusty? Come from I did, too. Yeah. Okay, cool. Oh, my God. Um, I didn't hear anything on my end. Was it me? Mm-hmm. Must have been. If, if both of us heard it and you didn't. Um, so I apologize for that screech if anyone heard it. If not, I'm just crazy. Me and Rusty are just crazy. Um, this this looks pretty cool. I think, isn't that a little, I mean, just for the blade steel, isn't that a little more expensive than the Kershaw? Because my Kershaw has the same blade steel, but it was like 120 bucks. But whatever. I think it's cool. I like the company. Um, we did a giveaway with their thing, uh, knives, thanks to Rusty providing them for the diversity shoot. And I think it's a really good looking knife. Um, and the weight, three and a half ounces, it's just one of those knives you'll forget you have in your pocket. And it's made of what, 6061 aluminum? The, yeah, the handle is. T6 aluminum? Yeah. So I, I feel you have a solid knife. Um, it's a little expensive. Compared to their fifty to seventy to eighty dollar knife, but with something like this, with the blade steel that it has, you're just going to have a sharp knife that lasts a real long time. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. So that is the Cobra Tech Region, and now Rusty gets to tell us about the grips that may or may not fit the Roscoe. Well, you know what? All you can do is call VZ Grips because VZ Grips have been manufacturing v, uh, been manufacturing handgun grips since 2003. With a reputation for quality, consistency, and innovation, top-tier manufacturers choose VZ Grips. They come in a variety of styles, patterns, colors, and manufactured from proprietary GTN, micarter, carbon fiber, or polymer. Available with a varying degree of texture. VZ offers a wide range of grips for all different firearm tops. Made in the USA, VZ gives you the grips that you can count on. Feature grip of the week is the 1911 VZ Recon Grenade. I don't you know. I really like the grenade grips. They are, they are, they are fantastic grips. I like the ones on the AR-15 the best. Um, coupon code uh, GGR15 gets you 15% off, off all handgun and rifle grips at VZGrips.com. Woohoo. And we do not have any listener feedback. So that means Tony gets to tell us about when you can go to a diversity shoot somewhere. You can go to a diver- I just looked at these recon grips with the grenade in the middle of them. That's hilarious. Um, <laughs> the diversity shoot is going to be June 6th at Gun for Hire Range in Woodland Park, 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. We can't wait to see you there Thursday, June 6th. Um, if you go to diversityshoots.com, you can click on the Eventbrite link and purchase your tickets. You can also visit my social media at Simon Says Train on Instagram. Click on the link there. You can also visit the second, second for everyone on, on uh, X and click on the link there. And it'll all take you to the Gun for Hire ticket sale for June 6th. I'm also going to put up the others too, uh, for the next two events and I definitely have 100% of cooperation from another range called We Shoot in in New Jersey, and we're going to be there. They're excited to have us, and I'll be coming with dates soon. Uh, if this weekend wasn't such a busy train wreck, I would have gotten the dates already, but a lot has happened, 
and it did happen over that time frame that didn't allow me to uh, consolidate with them, but we will. So, yes, we have yet another range in New Jersey that we will be hosting events at, and I can't wait. I'm really excited about it. Thank you guys for allowing us to do this here. I mean, we were here from the beginning. I think probably about the second or third event I started coming on this show, and now we've had multiple events. We've been across the country, and we're still here. I think it's great. Thanks a lot for everyone who supported me and donated and given money and even told the friends about me. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime, you know, you could, you're stuck being a co-host now. I mean, you drop off <laughs> and you don't get free advertising. So <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. You could send us free, quite, free, free advertising. to something that cost me thousands. Exactly. Of exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, Send questions, comments, or feedback to us at gungearreview at gmail.com. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review somewhere. Please visit, visit the Firearms Insider at firearmsinsider.tv. You can find reviews. There's links to the podcast. There's all kinds of other stuff there for you. You can check us out on Facebook, X, and Instagram at Firearms Insider. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you'll be notified for the live shows. You can also check out our great sponsors, as you heard of all of them. And as always, thank you for listening to the largest pound-for-pound pound podcast on the network. And we are out. Epstein didn't kill himself. This podcast has been a production of the Firearms Radio Network. For more, visit firearmsradio.net. <laughs>